in front of the uh, first of a series of churches we're supposed to visit in line with the uh, Visita Iglesia, the San Nicolas de Tolentino Church. It's here in Dimiao, Bohol. We're going to show you what the church looks like. We'll go on with our with our trip to the next church. This is the mall of KISS FM 102.3 in Tagbilaran City, Bohol. We're here in the first of seven churches we're supposed to, in connection with the observance of the Holy Week, and also in connection with our tradition of the seven churches visitation. We're supposed to visit the church on Monday, Thursday, actually, but then again, now we are allowed to visit the churches uh, any time during the Holy Week. Uh, like I said, series of churches. It's called the San Nicolas de Tolentino Church and it's located in Dimiao, Bohol. Dedicated to Saint Nicholas of Tolentino, whose feast day falls on every 10th of September, the Miao Church was the sixth parish that they Bohol during the Spanish era. This was constructed between 1797 and 1815, and it shows Baroque characteristics with Muslim influence. The altar on the pulpit and pipe organ dates are from the 19th century, and the old building material of Tobik Bampango can be found above the crossing. The church and its facade has horizontal decorative molding run along the facade, flanked by octagonal belfries. Restoration works were done to repair the damages from the 7.2 magnitude earthquake on October 15, 2013. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines formally turned over the restored church on September 1, 2018. Later, its roof was damaged by Super Typhoon Odette on December 17, 2021. This is the first of seven churches we're supposed to visit. I'm the mole of KISS FM 102.3 Tagbilaran City, Bohol. So we're here in Holy Trinity Church in Luai, Bohol. This is the second of seven churches we're visiting in line with Visita Iglesia. Holy Trinity Church. The town of Luai used to be a settlement called Barrio Santissima Trinidad. Its church's mother parish was Lobok until in 1799 when it became a parish. Jesuit missionaries were the first to take charge of its administration. Later, they were replaced by the Augustinian Recollect Friars up to 1898. The church, along with the convent, were a few properties that were not raised to the ground by American invaders in 1901. The church is cruciform, has two facades. The older is decorated with low relief, and the newer one was apparently completed in the 20th century, as its upper register is in reinforced concrete. The whole is surmounted by cement statues depicting the virtues. 
The bell tower is a separate structure built at a short distance from the church. Like many of the hall churches, the interior is painted with trompial and with biblical scenes. The authors are in the neoclassical style. The feast of the Blessed Trinity is held every Sunday after the Pentecost. The town of Luai celebrates the Sambat Mascara Eregata Festival in honor of the secondary patron, St. Francis Xavier. It's going to see the altar. This is the continuation of our special presentation for the Holy Week in observance of our tradition, which is Visita Iglesia. Seven churches to visit. You don't have to visit exactly on Holy Thursday. You're allowed to visit any time during the Holy Week. And this is the third church we're in right now. It's the Santa Monica Church Parish Church of Albuquerque, Bohol. Built on a low knoll, the parish was established in 1869 after its separation from the town of Buckleon. The facade of the church doesn't quite look as elaborate as those of other churches found in colonial period. It has surrounded pillars, as you can see, yes, that run along the structure's elevation and a quadrangular belfry that sits high in the upper center of the church. The tower houses three bells, each of which is inscribed with the names of its patron saints, namely Santa Monica, San Agustin, and Calipai, which translates to the word joy. To the right of the church, a series of arches shows pathway that connects the church to an old yet grand convent as well as a courtyard further beyond. On the second floor of the convent, there's a walkway going to the choir loft. The church's ceiling is made from tin and painted with religious images and scenes by renowned Cebuano artist Ray Francia, who also painted the Taoist church. The artist's name is etched in one side of the church's portico or the choir loft. The interiors of Santa Monica Church also has unique pillars that are made from sturdy tree trunks masked with metal sheets, which are said to have helped the church avoid major damage from the 2013 This is the fourth church we visited and we're in Baclayon, a part of the uh, Holy Week presentation of KISS FM at DYRD with my cameraman, Uye A, and yours truly, the mole of KISS FM 102.3. We will uh, go by the church entrance and then we will talk, say something about the church.
Purisima Concepcion de la Virgen Maria Parish Church. Also the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary Parish Church. Baclayon Church was founded by the Jesuit priest Juan de Torres and Gabriel Sanchez in 1596 and became the oldest Christian settlement in Bohol. It was elevated as a parish in 1717 and the present Coral Stone Church was completed in 1737. The church was declared a national cultural treasure by the National Museum of the Philippines and a national historical landmark by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Together with the churches of uh, Maragondon, Lobok, and Gian, the Baclayan Church was formally included for the UNESCO World Heritage Tentative List of the Philippines since 1993 under the collective group of Jesuit churches of the Philippines. When a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck Bohol and other parts of Central Visayas in 2013, the church building sustained major damage. Reconstruction by the National Museum of the Philippines started in 2013 and was completed in 2017. This is a special presentation of Holy Week known as the Old Tradition Visita Iglesia. You're watching a special Holy Week presentation of Visita Iglesia, a tradition in the Christian community. And we're in the fifth church here inside St. Augustine Church in Panglao, Bohol. Known locally as Panglao Church, its patron saint is St. Augustine, whose feast day is commemorated every year on August 28th. Recollect Father Valentin Otande started building the present Panglao Church in 1894 up to 1897 when he was transferred to another parish. Two other Spanish priests, Reverend Father Eugenio Hill, Father Pedro Jimenez, continued the construction slowly until 1898. Philippine Revolution against Spanish authority broke out. The construction was abandoned as the Spanish priests assigned in Panglao have left in 1912. Reverend Father Emiliano Veloso, the assigned parish priest, continued the construction with the cooperation of the church leaders, town officials, and residents of Pagla. A greater part of the nave was done in 1920, and by 1924, though still unfinished, a four-day inauguration affair was scheduled with the Bishop of Cebu, Juan P. Horror, celebrating the inaugural Mass and consecration on Sunday, August 31, 1924. Construction of the present church started in 1894 by Fray Valentin Otande until its completion. By the church contains one of the most unusual ceiling artwork. You can see the compositions in the country done in the 1920s. The St. Augustine Church's facade is inspired by reclassical architecture and includes the typical portion with Corinthian columns. Above the main entrance of the choir loft, but the church's most interesting features are its twin wooden antique confessionals carved with grapevine, flower, and dove patterns, as well as its ceiling murals depicting the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church. The house of my cameraman director, Uye A, this is the mall. Or KISS FM 102.3 
background is Our Lady of Assumption Parish Church here in Dawis Bukong. The construction of the Church of Our Lady of the Assumption came about when the town of Dawis separated from Baclayon and became an independent parish in 1697. A mix of architectural styles and border structure with impressive murals, a wooden pulpit, a portico for the choir loft, twisted columns, and a painted ceiling with Renaissance art patterns, serving as some of the highlights of the church. The church remains standing tall with renovations done by the National Historical Commission. Legend has it that the church's patron saint, the Virgin of Assumption, is believed to possess miraculous powers. According to the townspeople, Dawis was once invaded by pirates, so they locked themselves inside the church. The time came that they ran out of food supplies and water, and when they saw that a well had appeared at the foot of the altar, the water from the well is said to be able to heal sickness. Back here, this is the last of the seven churches we visited today as we make a special presentation for the Holy Week. The church's uh, visitations for Visita Iglesia. And we are here in Aguilaran City in the St. Joseph the Worker Cathedral. The Cathedral of St. Joseph the Worker is the main seat of the Catholic faith in the world. Church bearing the name of the province of Spain, St. Saint. It stands within the same area where the city hall, the capital, and the city plaza are located. A typical setting based on Spanish influence in the country. The church's history dates back to the arrival of the Jesuit missionaries in the Philippines in 1595. In 1768, the Recoletos took over the parish from the Jesuits. But since the fire that raised the church in 1798, the cathedral has undergone a series of improvements. The renovations resulted in an all new structure, leaving no trace of the original church's themes or motives. However, there remains a record of all priests who have served the parish from 1742 to the present can be seen by the cathedral's entrance here. The facade of the present cathedral exudes a neo-romantic architectural design characterized by basic corbel arches and streamlined windows. A statue of St. Joseph holding the infant Jesus right over there stands in front where a small obelisk used to be. Inside, the walls of the cathedral are adorned with wooden and historic images. The altar shows 18th century images of St. Joseph the Worker on the center, flanked by San Roque, or St. Laurent, and St. Vincent Ferrer on the opposite sides. Above St. Joseph's throne, there's an image of Nuestra Señora de Lourdes, Our Lady of Lourdes, which is said to be a donation from the royal house of Spaniards, Doña Maria de Bourbon. Let's go inside and have a look-see of the cathedral.
This is a special Holy Week presentation of DYRD and KISS FM 102.3. I'm the Mole.